Welcome to the League of Kings podcast. Meet your hosts, Willie, J. Dot, Big Brother, and Joe. Join these four distinct voices in insightful discussions about society and culture. Get ready for captivating content, camaraderie, and guaranteed laughter. Sit back, enjoy the show, and remember to like, share, and subscribe for an exciting journey ahead. Kings and Queens, welcome back to the League to the League of Kings podcast. And I am Willie, your habitual line stepper. And as usual, I got the league with me. J Dot, how you doing, King? Feeling good, feeling great. How are you, sir? How's everything? Pretty good, pretty good. Laid back Sunday. I was trying to steal Big Brother Shine. He always do that. Make me feel bad because I don't ask how you are. And then he gets the Big Brother. He's like, well, how are you, Willie? So I, I need to get that one out first. I feel that. I feel that. Joe, my brother. What up? what up, everybody? I'm doing great. Ready to roll. Feeling good. My man, my man. Resident Big Brother. How we feeling doing? Feeling good. Feeling energized. Great to be back with everybody. All right, all right, yeah. So, so simple, and short, right now. <laughs> everybody get, <laughs> everybody get to it. I, hey, you like it? I love it. So, I don't know if y'all, uh, how many hip hop heads we got here, or casual listeners, but this is the fiftieth anniversary of hip hop. Yes, sir. So, in in, in honor of, well, first. I want to know what, what what is everybody listening to right now, Big Brother? What, what what are you what are you doing? What are you listening to? Who 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 got you pop locking? He said pop locking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm still on um, Kendrick Lamar right now as far as hip hop goes, but mm. other than that, like my music taste is very broad. Which Kendrick? Which what, what what's your Kendrick album that you that you like? I would say his first one. For some reason, uh, for some reason, I just fell back into um, his single DNA. I just been rocking it so hard in the gym. Mm. Like it's something about the beat. Like once I really got into the lyrical content of the of the of it, I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, I I really I really like the uh, the hot steppers. I really like. Yeah, I, I, a lot of people didn't like it, but I I, I loved it. I did. I it, it I relate to it a whole lot. So yeah, I, I, I think I heard you say that before. Yeah, it. I I, re, I really relate with that because it, it was. You can tell how much he grew as a man and a, and a father and a husband in that album. So I I really related with that one a lot. J Dot, who you listen to right now? Man, well, the you know the universe has conspired to put me in a space where. I'm listening to a lot of R&B right now, mm. but uh, when I when I take a break from the R&B, I, I'm still stuck on uh, Russ's last album, Santiago. Like I think I have similar feelings about that album to probably you know you and the and the High Steppers. Like it's it's a very adult and not adult in like the pornographic way, but it's a very adult album. It's, this is a rapper who's going through you know middle age, late thirties, early forties uh, kind of things, and like actually making dope music about it so it's it's nice to be able to listen to an album that sonically sounds good but if you can connect you know with the lyrics and um it has a point you know it's it's the soundtrack to a lot of different things going on into my life right now so that's uh if you if you haven't listened to russ he's definitely one to check out for look out for i do appreciate you uh turning me on to him apparently i'm late to the party because i talked to one of my homeboys at work he's like oh yeah russ <laughs> Where you been? I was like, well, I don't know. I've been, I've been, listen, I've been listening to Kevin Gates. I don't know. I'm, I, I was in a different vibe. I'm, you know, sorry, but I do appreciate you turning me on to him. That that was a very dope album. It, it was, it was refreshing. I say that compared to what's what what's playing now. It, it is. Ref, it was a very very refreshing album. So I, I appreciate you for that. He does everything independent. So he'd been, you know, he's not a mainstream. You're going to find him on the radio kind of artist. So mm-hmm. it's understandable you know, that people may or may not have heard of. Yeah. yeah. I, 
I do, but I I I, def, I, I, love, I liked it. Uh, Joe, who 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 you who you worming out to? I am uh, listening to uh, a lot of Post Malone. Okay, before. okay. It's just uh, you know, I like all his uh, all his songs, but what I like about that guy is that uh, he sings with passion. You know, like it's all from the heart. And that's what's just uh, more intriguing. As you listen, do you watch him on the videos or live or whatever? This guy's like pouring it all out out there. It's crazy. I like Post Malone. Not not everything, but I got like five or six songs that I really, I really like. So, yeah. You know oh, what? Boy, boy. You know, I, I, I said worming because uh, for your hundredth, Episode you made a, did a picture where you was kind of like doing the um, squat, and I was like, I wonder if Joe used to break dance because you had so that. So did I. Cause, cause so it, did I. Because he had that pose, <laughs> didn't he? Like, like he, like you had a pose, like you just came out of a spin and hopped up and was like, "What's up?" You know what I mean? Yeah. And your son was like, right Shh, and your son got the picture as you back. stood up. What's that? I, I bet. It's some cardboard in the corner. Okay? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, um, <laughs> I didn't break dance. I didn't. And that's that's rare. That's weird, right? But I didn't. And uh, I just could never, I just could never get that pop in and all. I just, I couldn't do it. But, you know, funny story about that picture is that picture is actually a bathroom. Mm. So there's a bar that we go and. Uh, it's a, it's more of a pub, and the restroom is like that. Mm. So they just got some dudes in there, and they just started tagging the walls and all kind of. That's an actual restroom. Oh, that's dope. I like mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Quick story about re- about uh, bathroom selfies. I got a story about bathroom too, but go ahead. You you go ahead, J Dot. I'm not I'm not gonna go into it because I don't you know we having a good night and I don't want to do any of that. <laughs> okay. Well, then I will go there. So. I was at a museum downtown, right? It was the men's men's restroom. They have a, a open urinal. You know, it's like one to one. It do, it doesn't have the individuals like one long stall. Well, when you look up at the wall, it's a two way mirror. So when you pee in, you can see people walking by, and they're like looking. At the mirror, I'm not making this up, big brother. I swear. What restaurant is this, and have they been fined? It's a museum. Oh, museum. Yes. It's a two-way mirror. And I. first of all, I didn't know. You don't know until somebody walks by. So I'm sitting there, and somebody is just like staring at me and I'm like I can't go I can't I can't do hey man yes yeah isn't it that's like the dope. weirdest thing ever that's a dope yeah. social experiment that I, I I can see you could do some research with that yeah yeah, yeah well it, 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 it have there been any studies with uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll find one. Oh man <laughs> Yeah. Yo, J Dot, slow down. We're gonna get so much homework before the next episode. We're gonna have like five <laughs> packets. I'm like, yo, you finish your homework. Oh, no, I still gotta read up for the episode. Man, this pack is thick. <laughs> he, he comes with his research. I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, that 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 was weird. Oh man. Uh I'm all over the place, man. Like right now. <laughs> right now. Of course, I do my Kevin Gates. Uh, I got some Project Pat up in there. I got some Big Boy, as you heard from the intro. In the intro, so I'm I'm kind of like I'm 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 a little bit everywhere right now. I don't have one particular artist. Like I have a I have a playlist that I created to different artists I want to listen to from different songs. So that's not like an album that I'm like listening to right now. But so J Dot, 
Who is your favorite rapper? An album. It- All right. So my favorite rapper, my favorite album is not from my favorite rapper, but... Uh, anybody knows me. I'm a I'm a huge Jay Z fan, and I I accept all the hate and smoke that comes with that. People for I think people look at Jay Z the way they look at the Cowboys. Like you know, I think they hate them because so many people love them. You know, mm-hmm. I hate the Cowboys too, so I understand it. But uh, it to me, Jay Z is is uh, greatest rapper of all time. Uh, my favorite album though is uh, Most Deaths or Yasin Bey, his first album, Black on Both Sides. I think the album just came out. At the perfect time for me, I was uh, just graduating high school and going into college and, uh, you know, trying to decide what I was going to do. And just the stuff that he he touches on in the album, you know, the lyricism um, and then the, the blackness at a time where I was dealing with my uh, my Carlton uh, suburban identity. Uh, it meant something to me. So, yeah, Black on Both Sides, my favorite album. But Jay-Z, definitely my favorite rap. Okay. My favorite album from Jay Z is uh, American Gangster. Dope album, very dope. Album. Very dope, very dope. I was uh, everything that that's a press play for me, which means I'm not skipping. Like it's, I'm just I'm I'm pressing it, so I may have it on shuffle, and I'm just pressing play and I'm going. Big Brother, favorite um favorite rapper and favorite album and why. Um, favorite rapper, I would say, <laughs> I know people always be like, who? But LL, I think he, he gives you a nice balance of lyrics on top of good party songs. So I know a lot of people are like very into like the, you know, like the lyricism, but I like LL cause people forget that he is a battle rapper. Mm-hmm. Because they always listen to his party songs or his songs for the ladies. But yeah, LL, definitely that. And I would have to say the more and more, I don't have a favorite album by anyone, but I can see once I really go through Kendrick's full bodies of work, I can see one of his being one one of my favorites. Because it's just, you, you can't, the more you listen to it, the more you can just hear what he's saying. So yeah, that's where I'm at with it. I feel that. Fuck those eat cool J cookies. I'm bad. All right, anyway, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> Mama said knock you out. With with all your wisdom, I don't know why I thought you was gonna say Kodak Black. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a joke. It was a joke. It was. <laughs> he gonna show up to the next show with a uh, with the ski mask on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or I could I could say uh, Who is it from the roots What's his name Black Thought uh, yeah, Can't mm-hmm. go wrong with that one Yeah you can't Yeah yeah. Nah this dope L, L, I, I I remember L, L, L was Turned up the charts That was nobody Touching him for a while Big bro uh, Joe Favorite rapper Is gonna be Tupac Okay. And my favorite album is going to be Dr. Dre, Chronic 2001. Old school. <laughs> okay. Deep yeah, I was trying to put that together. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not mad, Joe. I, you know, the, when it comes to Tupac, all, most of all his songs are his albums. No, you know I, I like them, but just for some reason, the Chronic, the Chronic 2001 with Dr. Dre, man, because there's the original Chronic, mm-hmm. right, and then there's 2001 Chronic, and uh, that's just I don't know, man. The beats, it's just is that the one with they forgot about Dre? Yeah, yeah, that's the one with the leaf with the pot leaf on it. Yeah, explosion. Yeah, I, yeah. No, that's one of my favorite songs. By them. They forgot about explosive. Yeah. Uh, Still, dre was still dre. Yeah, was written by Jay Z. Yeah, he wrote it for Dr. Dre. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm also a Tupac fan too. And I was going to ask you, Joe. I was going to kind of quiz you on your Tupac knowledge. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, do you have Do you have um 
a rose that grew from a concrete book? Uh, I don't. Do you have his autobiography book that comes with a lot of his poetry that uh, that they that he did in the studio and ended up putting it on the CD? I, I don't, but I was able to get it online because I, you know I found out that he did all kinds of the other stuff when I well. What was that? It was like a documentary or a movie that uh, explains a little bit more of his personal life. Mm-hmm. And because uh, I know that when the first movie came out a long time ago, it was kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, they showed a lot of it of his story, but there was a lot. There's a lot more to it. And yeah, that's uh, it was. He, he was talented, man. You know what I mean? It's just um, people like that are a gift. You know? Yeah, I mean, he talked a lot of shit, but I mean, you know what I mean? It's rap and. He's just uh, he's talented. I mean, just imagine what he could have done now. Yeah, I well see that that's what I was saying because uh, I didn't listen to any co- to any East Coast rap until at least two years after Tupac died. <laughs> so I yeah. I was um, yeah, it was uh, Bad Boy. I'm not Bad Boy, but it, yeah, Bad Boy Killer. Yeah. Yep. So I was I was one of those Tupac heads, uh, yeah. but I also had gotten to his revolutionary side, you no, know, his Black Panther side with his mother and his uh, uncle. So I was that uh, that deep into Tupac. I you know, very much the opposite. I didn't listen to any West Coast music. Mm-hmm. I was a hundred percent. Bad boy for life, <laughs> and I get in a lot of arguments about Tupac. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that tonight. We got other topics to discuss. Yeah, but, uh, no, I mean now, I I, uh, I listen a little bit. Of, I listen to everybody now. No, I listen to some East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna say I ain't gonna say everybody, remember, huh? Does anybody remember, does anybody remember the first movie that Tupac was in? The first movie was the one with um, Dan Aykroyd. Was it Juice? Nope. No, it, trouble. Dan Aykroyd, Chevy trouble. Chase. Nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble. No. Yeah, it was him in uh, Digital Underland, Digital Underground. Yeah. And he was wearing a Yankees jersey. He so, was. You know, we talked like old stuff in that movie. He was. Well, that that guy's from New York. You know I mean, that's that's where he's from. Mm-hmm. New Jersey. I can see that? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Over the border, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, he he from New Jersey, but he hung out in New York. So yeah, New York, yeah. Um, my favorite rapper since Joe took Tupac. I'm I'm a, and I and I know how much you are about Tupac. I'm gonna say E40, Earl Stevens. I knew it. <laughs> oh jeez, all right, bro. Like we normally are like eye to eye. I know, I, I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm, 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 I'm sure, I, I, I was expecting to disappoint someone today, and I'm sorry it was you, J Dot. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and not one of us, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I wouldn't have mind disappointing Joe, uh, big brother, but not you, J Dot. Uh, but, we already had this conversation. Yeah, about this, you know. but the, see, the thing is, first, first, I I grew up on West Coast, so you know, Too Short, um, E Forty, um, NWA, a lot, a lot of that music my brother gave me. So that's what I grew up on. He did have Biz Markie. I, I did like a Biz Markie, make the music with your, with, your, with your mouth, Biz. So, I mean, but other than that, I was West Coast. So, and then E-40 was just the one that, E-40 and Too Short was the ones that I really listened to a lot. I don't have a particular album, like favorite album. Like Big Brother said, I, I I don't have one. And right now, I cannot say that I will have a favorite album because each album, each album is, 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 is different for me. I get something different from, from certain, certain artists. 
So this is why I can't answer questions first no more because I was trying to follow the rule. I, I felt like I felt pressure to pick a favorite album <laughs> that was part of the quest, and I didn't. I had no idea he just opt out like y'all did. Like that's wait. You see J Dodd's hand. He's doing. He got the hands like I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I didn't know you could pick a, a, a option C. Like, okay. I, know we had I, I'll, I'll pick. I'll pick one. So, my favorite album, but it, it you know what, Machiavelli. How about that? So, so now, so now I done, I done. That's twice. I done, I done disappointed you because I done. So now, Machiavelli, yeah, yeah, Machiavelli, yeah. Tupac. Cool. I mean, you, you yeah, your favorite rapper. I, and yeah, <laughs> album is your favorite album. All right, I know. All right, so if I have to pick one, I'm just going to go ahead and pick what is it, Mr. Smith? There you go from LL. Okay. All right. All right. I'm just. You know, it's rules for a reason. It says rules for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we kings, we 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 make the rules. Exactly. Uh, we make the rules. Okay. No, nah, but no. Nah, it's it, it's fair. It's fair. We we did you went first and we put you on the spot. So it, it's only right that we uh give you an album. And mine's is gonna be Machiavelli that has one of the one of the best disc records uh, that's out there. Let me ask y'all a question. You know what? Before we move on, since we're talking about uh, hip hop fifth anniversary, what is your favorite disc track? Go, go, big brother. You're not ready? You need me to come back to you? You need to think about it? Yeah, let me think about it. Okay. J-Dot, I know you got it. Favorite diss uh, track? Just because I'm being asked to to pick, and uh, I'm trying to think of diss tracks I can think of. I'm going to go with, uh, I go with something recent. I go with back-to-back uh, Drake's diss to Meek Mill. I like that. Okay. That was dope. That was dope. Joe? I'm thinking. Um... Go ahead, Will. Go ahead. Let me let me let me process. You, but you're a Tupac fan. I thought you was gonna say hit him up. I thought you was automatically. You know what? I no. go. I go. So, I go. No, you are fine. You are fine. You a big brother. Y'all 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 get y'all shit together, and I'm gonna go. My, I know which one. I, I'm gonna. I'm no, gonna no. You gotta wait now. You know you you don't miss your opportunity. <laughs> I had to. I had to think. I no, like, no. You gotta deep. wait. So mine is Pimp C Massacre. If you ain't never heard it, Spotify it, Google it, YouTube it, uh, uh, title it, look it up. Pimp C. Pimp C. Massacre. Who was he beefing with? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I think it was. I don't remember. I think I, I don't. It could have. It could have been Jeezy. Because that was around that was around the time when they was beefing, and it was somebody else. It was another rapper in Texas that he was beefing with. Because he had like two or three beefs going on at one time, and I, damn, I'm mad because I just watched a um, clip on YouTube with one of the guys was was talking about it. But it was during that time with with Jeezy when he was uh, starting to beef with Jeezy. Go ahead, Joe. You ready? You ready now? Yeah, we're gonna go with Hail Mary, Tupac, and um, well, you don't like that. What, what happened? Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to think if I was trying to. Was that a diss track? I mean, it, it was angry. I ain't a killer, but don't push me. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Very violent. Yeah. I yeah. Like it. Yeah, you you start that off. I ain't a killer. Yeah, that's that's, yeah, you know, it, like that that's a line that that's a line that like if you read it, it's like okay, but then if they say it, it's like oh, that's what you meant. Okay, I I I got you. Okay, all right. Uh, big brother, you want me to go ahead and this what is is it the the one with him and cannabis? <laughs> Grim Reaper, the the Green Reaper. The Green Reaper's back. Oh no, that's good too. But uh, of course, you know, I, I think I should just say this, and you should move on. 
immediately. <laughs> um, I would have to say Nas diss track to Jay Z. We can't move on, big brother. We can't. How are we going to just? <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to move on from that, people. Go, we'll move us on. I, I could go down a rabbit. We're not going to do that. All right, all right. We 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 moving on. We moving on. All right. Since we're moving on, big brother, give us two books that changed your life or inspired you. Uh you're going to get mad. Can you come back around to me on that one? I got to think. See, no, nah, because you said move on. You threw your hands up in the air, threw gummy bears at the screen. And and now, you, all right, cool. See, you you and Joe, you and Joe right here. Let, let me get my pen together. Look, you and Joe. <laughs> all right. You, you better not lose the only good pen. She'll be like, you see my pen that I grade these kids? Right, <laughs> right. She's staring at me right now. What are you doing with my green pen? Uh, J. Dot. Two books that change your life or inspire you. So we'll, we'll keep it hip hop to start. Um, Russell Simmons, Success Through Stillness. Uh, it's a book on uh, transcendental meditation. And it was really my first exposure to meditation and uh, how to do it. Why? And he tells his whole journey through, you know, discovering meditation and the benefits that it's had for him. I don't practice as much as I should, but it's it's in my toolbox as you know something to go back to and lean on um, when I need it. But just to hear it from the perspective of somebody that you know I respect in the industry that I you know grew up loving, and you know and and how it probably played its role in some of the uh, the music that raised me, you know, was enough of a reason to get me interested. So that one was a big one, and the other one is more recent. Um, I don't remember the author's name, but it's uh, what you think your what you think of me is none of my business, mm. and uh, that was a that was a big one for me because that that's been a huge problem for me getting wrapped up in uh, how I'm perceived, and now learning how to put character before reputation, and worry about who I actually am versus who people think I am, mm-hmm. and the fact that you get wrapped up in because that people's perception of you is something you can't control. You can work your whole life trying to paint this picture of yourself. And people are still going to see you however they choose to, and getting wrapped up in that, you know how uh, how detrimental that can be. But the book has a lot of practices that help you identify those spaces where you're where you're doing that, where you're putting your reputation before your character, and then you know talks you through how to you know make that transition to the other side. So those two books, the meditation, and then uh, stop stop caring about what people think about me. Uh, those those two books definitely changed my life. What you think of me? What's it called again? I think it's, I think it's what you think of me is none of my business. It's none of my business. All right, I'm gonna write that down. Uh, Joe, are you are you ready, sir? Yeah, um, I, I do some of the recent ones. I I like to read a lot of stuff. So uh, actually, I used to read a lot of stuff, but now I just listen to it on the audible just easier for me when I work. Um, one of the books is the uh, immortality key by, uh, Brian Murrescu. I said it right, but that's, uh, it's the history of the religion with no name. That's what it's called. I think that's what it's called. Uh, the, the secret history of the religion with no name. I think that's the, the name of the book. And it's, uh, it's wild. It's, uh, through the search of the history of uh, trying to find this religion where they think it all started. Uh, they start talking about drugs and psychedelics and, and how all these uh, people back in the day used to, you know, like all these people used to go see their gods in the special room. Well, that's because they were uh, drinking this potion, right? They were spiking stuff with wine, with drugs. So they were hallucinating. So how much of the stuff was stuff that's written down on those books is that these dudes just hallucinating because they're all high who knows but that's what they used to use back in the day you know what i mean so it's interesting uh the second book you have to read it to to really uh to really understand it but it's 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 awesome uh the second one is uh this is kind of sound kind of weird but um the book that really uh got me going was this called green lights by matthew mcconaughey and uh he it's a great book, man. He tells the story, um, it goes into personal 
on how how, how, how he grew up and the uh, challenges, you know, that they weren't easy and all. And it's just, it's a, it's a great personal story, you know, uh, about somebody that's famous that sometimes we think that, Hey, you know, they got it easy and uh, you, they tell their story and it's like, Holy shit. You know, they're similar to a lot of us, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, he didn't know he was going to make it, but he made it just, uh, but it, it's, it's a really good story. It talks about his family, self, mom, dad, everybody. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, that's just a few of the, few of the books that, but. Okay. I've seen that on um because I do Audible too, as well. Mm-hmm. I'm just waiting for it to be free before I um mm-hmm. get it before I put it in my free library. Night, night. Yeah, I got my my wish list is like twenty books strong right now. So uh I got other books that you, I, I want to read. You know what book is really, really good? Uh I talked about it a long time ago, one of my episodes. It's um uh this guy that uh he's he's does a lot of motivation stuff now, motivational kind of speaker. Uh, he's an ex uh, Navy SEAL. David Googan, um, Goggins. David Goggins. That, uh, book, that is, book is dope. Can't keep me, can't keep me down, or something. Can't remember what it's called. Man, yeah. that's yeah, insane. The the what you can do with your body and how you can push your mind. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, that was that was an amazing book, and um, that was one of those. This is one of the things I like about Audible is you get the have the author. Tell the story yes. so you get the tone of the words, and it makes it more enjoyable. And but that book, I think I read that book back to back when I first got it. Really good. I haven't read his second book that he got out, but yeah, that book. I only read that one. Huh? But it was like holy shit. That's the that's the one that I I haven't read the other one, but that one was like. I was like, holy shit, this thing is... Because it was like narrated, but it was like a podcast. Yes. There was in between. Yeah, and it was like a podcast. They were doing a podcast in between the book. It was uh, and it was, it was crazy. I was like, wow, this is a super great idea. But, I mean, he talks about, you know, uh, overweight and uh, racist and being, mm-hmm. the, you know, people that were being racist mm-hmm. against him and all this. I mean, it was just, uh, yeah. you know, about his <clears throat> struggles. And it's just like, holy shit, man, that's... Uh, a life like that is uh, a lot of people will break down. Yeah, it was good. I, it was so good. I ended up buying the physical copy of the book. <laughs> so yeah, I, I definitely can't, oh, can't, can't hurt me. Can't hurt me. That's what it's called. Yeah. Can't hurt me. Yeah. Big brother. You need some more time. <laughs> <laughs> you need me bring no, I'm good. Okay. Um, one book is the purpose driven life by Rick Warren. Um, So he's basically reiterating the purpose that everyone is born with a purpose and seeking your purpose out through God. So with that book, you know, it just really taught me the value of my life and having a life and just really working to discover my purpose and cultivating that. So I would have to say that that was definitely one. And Definitely one of the books out of the Bible, the book of Joshua, you know, reading that taught me how to be a leader and the responsibility of leadership and the battles that he led the people through. It taught me how to navigate everyday battles in life and that to rely on the promises that God has promised you. So those two books just really helped and are helping me form as a solid purpose person, always realizing that there's a purpose behind everything. Okay. Okay. The purpose driven life. Yeah. Okay. I got it written down. Uh, J Dot, I was going to say, uh, have you, since we know you stayed in the hip hop, have you read any of Rick Ross's books or listen? No, I'm, I'm ser- no seriously. I, I can see you serious. I, I can't. Um, it could be one of those moments where I'm, I'm missing out on something. But you know, every once in a while, you just you see a person and you just say, hey, "It's not much I can learn from that person." So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, <sighs> and keep it pushing. I'm, no diss to Rick Ross, but uh, after uh, what is he? What did he say? Uh, plastic forks and fried rice, whatever that line was supposed to mean. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not necessarily, you know, excited to read an entire book. From a person who put, but if you vouch for it, really, if you are vouching for it, yeah, 
I would give it a go. I'm going to say yes because he talks about financial structure. Okay. Not only, yeah, not, not only as, you know, an artist, but also for anyone who is trying to better themselves. He's like, you know, whether, whether you work in a McDonald's, work that job till you can't work it no more. You know, hu- no hustle. No, I- I- anybody, everybody's a hustle, a hustler. It's just how, it's just a matter of how, how you move. But it, it, it really, it's, it's a really good book, man. I know our society, we, we don't know how to separate the artist from the person. And we get attached to the artist and we forget that that is a, um, oh my God. I'm going to say a mask. It's their job. You know what I mean? We forget that they are a person and they're not always the same. The, the person you hear from behind the mic is not always the person after they leave that booth. And that has always bothered me. I, I tend to gravitate to who are artists that I feel are, <clears throat> their art is a reflection of who they are, not an attempt to mm-hmm. I've even I've even read the Jay-Z book. So the the one he, that was read by uh, Michael Dyson. That the decoded, or I don't think it was the decoded. It's the uh, it's another one. I get I get you the title later on, but it that was that one was good. I, I'm I'm a fan of Michael Dyson, and he he did a really good job of breaking it down because he actually broke down his lyrics as well. Yeah. So. I would check it out. If you vouch for it, Willie, that's how much respect I have for you. Even though you're an E40 fan, I still <laughs> <laughs> don't hold it against me, brother. Don't don't hold it against me. Uh, my two books. Oh, Chiro. And J Dot. Uh, this first one's going to be for you. Okay. The Alchemist by uh, Paulo. Uh, damn. I had his last name. I was practicing it, and I'm about to screw it up. Uh, Kulo, Kulo, Kulo. I don't know. He's Brazilian. Just, 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 just look up the Alchemist, the book. Okay, he's the only, he's the only author. But fun fact: the artist Russ, his album Santiago, is based on the book The Alchemist. Uh, ah, did not did not tell you I had something for you. So you did. You did. So the the book Alchemist is about a sheep herder called Santiago, and what the book is is it it yeah. teaches you or it speak it speaks on how. You shall follow your dreams, your path to your dream on, on what you want to do, who you want to be. It also speaks on how a lot of a lot of things that you think that you need, you actually already have. So the alchemist, check that out. I, I, I know I always that's something I always talk about. It's funny because both my both of my books are spiritual books and I'm not really a spiritual person at all. A lot of, a lot of books that I have read are, are spiritual books are Christian based books, but there's a lot of mess there. There's a lot of messages in those books that I've found really profound. Uh, the second one is a book that I found that I also found during the uh, pandemic is um, Jason Wilson, Cry Like a Man. Mm. Did you hear that, Big Brother? <laughs> Heard a lot of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, Cry Like a Man. Uh, the end of that book, he he that was another one on Audible, Joe. That he um he read it and. 
once he got to the end, I cried. I was at work yeah. on the floor. I remember you saying that at one of your one of your episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was on the forklift crying because everything he hit, it was hitting. Nice. Uh, J Dot, I I definitely recommend that for you, brother. I don't look look just just I recommend it, man. That that that's that's all I'm gonna say. That ain't ain't no low blow, ain't ain't no shot. It's just from one brother to one brother. That's a I would buy it for you. That's that's how that that that's that's how confident I am. Where I feel like I want you to to to, to hear it. Or I want you to read it. I have to read it now. All right, and I will. It's, it's funny that you said about this spiritual thing because uh, uh, what you think of me is none of my business. Is is Christian based as well? But you don't have to. You know, you don't have to be. Mm-hmm. You, you take the meat and leave the bone, kind of thing. Right. A, a lot of the um, books that uh, Paulo, the the author that I can't pronounce, all of a sudden, all his books are spiritual based, but all of them have a more deeper message in them. So, um, since, since, since Joe gave a third one, I'm going to give a third one. 48 Laws of Power. Hmm. Have any, any of y'all, do any of y'all have 50 hours to um, read a book? <laughs> Listen to a book? <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's, like, it's like 56 hours on Audible. Wow. Uh, the 48 have, have y'all heard of it 48 laws of power no alright uh, I've been told that it's really big um, in correctional facilities hmm. um, and I see <clears throat> I see why because it does change the way that you think it changes the way that you talk to people and the way that you Move with people, so okay. that that's another that's another good book to read if if y'all have the time. It starts off a little weird because he he tells stories, and then after the story, he breaks down what what was the meaning of that story, and then what what you might what you didn't pick up. It's like we're we're all leads, our leaders in here, right? Like in our work, in our work space or whatnot. So, like one of the things that I, I do remember and I tend to forget, one of the laws is never come off as being smarter than the person above you because you can come off as a threat, so they'll take you out. So you have to let them... You have to let them help them, but don't come off as being as you smarter than them. So it's not like you don't don't stay in your. They're not saying stay in your place, but just know how much to give and then know how much to to keep back. So it's sort of like the the prince. Have you have you read that book, Machiavelli? Yeah. I can't hear you, J Dot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, that's okay. That's what I was getting from what you were saying. Like the yes. prince kind of uh, walking you through, mm-hmm. you know, the yeah. process of eating and maintaining power, things like that. Yeah, it's it's sort of it's sort of like that. As we throw in our honorable mentions, I just say uh, Tony Dungy has a bunch, has a couple of books, mm-hmm. and they're all again spiritual based because he's a very uh, religious man. But you know, just based on his success and the things he was able to do as a as a leader. There's a lot that you can pick up from it. And I know one of them is, is like a uh, a year-long planner. And it has, you know, every day there's an exercise to take or a thought to do. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm Tony Dungy is definitely an inspiration for me. So if you ever have a chance to check out any of any of his, uh, his books, it's a good read. Okay. I will. I will definitely add some of those to my um, wish list. Before we move on, because we got some uh, something else that we need to get into what 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 are you reading right now, J Dot? I'm reading uh the Nipsey Hustle book, the Marathon Never the Marathon Don't Stop. I uh, 
my East Coast bias. Mm-hmm. I paid no attention to Nipsey Hussle until he passed. And then uh, I, I, I do enjoy his music, but reading the book, you get to see who he was as a man and, and what he could have been. Very much, you know, a tragic story on the, on the level of like a Tupac. Mm-hmm. Um, you look at what he was trying to do for his community and his motivations behind it. And, uh, you know, the fact that we lost him um, so young, but it's a, it's a good read so far. Okay. I need to, I do need to add that. I, I've seen that. So I'll, I'll definitely add that. Big Brother, what you reading right now? Uh, nothing currently, but um, I think I'm going to pick up that recommendation that you and Joe said about that Navy SEAL, because I do remember him doing an interview. And now that hearing you two speak on it, I think I may be, that may be my next thing I jump into. Can't hurt me. That's what yeah. it's called. Can't hurt me. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Very, very good one. Yeah, the marathon, marathon don't stop. Yep, I will write that down. So yeah, cause see, I'm, I'm I'm actually taking notes, and I don't see nobody writing. Y'all y'all didn't y'all don't have no pen, no paper. So what 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 are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? Did did did, did y'all did, did y'all I was, eat breakfast? I was typing it in and, and screenshotting it. Babe, babe, they ain't got no paper, no pencil. <laughs> Nothing. They ain't writing shit down. A whole class. We, we supposed to be taking going. notes. <laughs> so next time y'all see Fee, y'all 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 got y'all y'all gotta y'all, y'all y'all gonna have to answer that. I ain't. I'm I'm not doing this with y'all. Joe, what you reading right now? I haven't started reading. I had to go get it because I was trying to get the name right. I haven't started on it. I'm gonna start on it. This is an actual book. It's an actual book that I have. And it's the Plato, the Symposium book. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm about. That's what I'm about to take on, on uh, uh, here coming soon. But this is something that I have to, uh, you know, if I go on a plane or if I'm taking a small break, cause this, you know, it's a book. So I, it takes, uh, I can do, I can multitask. I can work while I listen to books, listen to podcasts and all that. But when you have a book, you can't, you have to, Pay attention to it, while, you know, while you turn the pages. So yeah, it, it, it's physically impossible. I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, deep, let's see. What's that? A lot, of, a lot of deep thinkers in this group. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I am currently trying to finish up uh, a new Jim Crow. That that's the book that I'm reading. So uh I don't think that Big Brother was even surprised that I even said something like that. So uh <laughs> no, 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 but but I can't wait to hear your thoughts on it and that's just being real. Yeah. Because you and I well, all of us fellas, off of recording sessions, you know, I've already spoken out about how I you know, how strongly I feel against stuff like that. Right. Uh just- uh, your physical well-being, Willie. I, I, I don't think you you need to be any angrier. I don't think you need to get any more upset than you already are. I just I'm just I'm just worried about you. That's it. That's I'm it. honestly I've taken my time with this one. It's hard to listen to this one at work. I've listened to similar books like this at work, and how that work though? Yeah, it's it's a all I see is red, brother. I have an attitude. I can I I don't care if my sugar level ain't low. I got an attitude. <laughs> what you want me to move now? You know. <laughs> you know it's just uh, it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm worried about you, Willie. I'm worried about. You. I, I, I appreciate it, man. But yeah, I, right now I'm about halfway through it. I. I hate saying that I like it because of what it's about. It's a, it is a good a good book, but the the things that's in it I don't I don't like. Um, but it's also it's also another one of those books where I feel like I've read I've got the information before in another type of book. So it's kind of like it's not a book that I really feel like I need to rush through. But it it was highly recommended, so I, I read it. So, all right. 
so moving on. I want to, um, I'm going I'm to kind of skip some stuff around here, big brother. Okay. Oh, so, that's fine. Oh, let's just suggest it. All right. So I want to talk about, uh, men in grief, you know, uh, suppressed grief, not, not able to understand the feelings. So I'm going to go first on this one because I have so, so sort of a story. It's not my story, so I can't give a lot of details or names or nothing like that. I know a guy, a few weeks ago, his son got killed. A few days later, his wife was ready to end it herself. So I, I keep seeing him and we've had talks here and there and stuff. And, and, and one day I seen him, he had tears in his eyes. You know, we talking weeks later. So I was like, brother, you good? What's up? Talk to me. He was like, man, he said, I haven't really had time to process everything. He said, well, my son getting killed. My wife, she's, he said, I'm worried about her because I don't know what she's going to do. I just lost my mom six months ago. So I haven't even been able to deal with that properly. I'm like, what? He was like, yeah. I was like, man, I was like, so what, what are you, what are you doing? Like, are you, do you have anybody that you talk to? Are y'all going to some type of counseling, therapy? What, what, how, how are y'all able, what, what are y'all doing to navigate through this? I said, cause y'all, it, it, it's going to take some time for y'all to, 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 to get through this. And he looked, he looked me in my face. He said, man, he said, I don't know how. I said, when's the last time you had time for your, like took time for yourself? I said, because if you're not together, my brother, I said, I, I can tell by the way you walk that you just, you, you, you're tired. I can tell. He said, I haven't. He said, every, he said, you know, I work to keep my mind off things. I go home and then it's like, I'm worried about my wife. He said, so I haven't had time to process anything. I haven't, I haven't had time to grieve. He's like, I don't know how to grieve. Like what, what, like he literally looked at me. He's like, how, 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 how do I do that? I was like, man, I was like, it's one day at a time. I can't really give you all the answers, but I know that you, 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 you will need some type of assistance with this. You know, I'm not trained to give you this type, but if you want to talk about it, we can talk about it. And now he continued to go about how it's just him. You know, him and his relatives don't really talk no more. And then out of nowhere, because he's getting comfortable with me, he's like, man, he said, I watched my dad kill himself. So I was like, man, how? I was like, you have to, at some, at some point, you're going to have to deal with this, brother. I said, because it's going to eat you alive from the inside. And like I said, I, I, I see you, I see the way you walk and you look, you look tired. Brothers, have, have, have you ever seen somebody so tired where they just, the things they say doesn't even make sense sometimes. Or the way they move, you can just tell that they, they are physically, mentally fatigued. I was like, look, man, I try to give him my number. So if he wants to like talk, you know, he, you know, you can just shoot me a text. You ain't, we ain't got to talk on the phone. You just shoot me a text. He's like, my, my phone don't, you know, I don't have service. 
I said, okay. I said, well, um, do you need a hug? I said, I'll give you a hug, man. If you need a hug, if you want a hug. He was like, no. Nah. He's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. He's like, I, I can tell that you're a genuine person, you know. He said, and, and I appreciate you. Just me and you talking, I, I appreciate that because he said, I haven't had nobody to talk to about this. He's like, you're the only one I've, I've talked to about this. That kind of weighed heavy on me, y'all. Because in some aspects, I really didn't know what to tell him. Because I have my own issues with you know, grieving. But at the same time, I was like, man, he, he just needs somebody to talk to. No, he, he just needs somebody to talk to. So what I told him, I was like, I'm gonna give you I'm I'm gonna give you some homework this weekend. I said, on your way home, I said, I want you to stop and get you a sandwich. Get your favorite sandwich, get you a soda or something, get you something to drink. And just go down to the waterfront at the table. Have the sandwich. Turn some music on and, and just sit there and just process it, man. I said, if you gotta cry, cry. You know, I said, but you, you, you need to do something to, to, to process the pain that you're going through right now. So I'm going to open the floor up to the Kings and I want to ask y'all, how, how do y'all deal with, with grief? We're grieving of a lost one or multiple losses. How 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 do y'all how do y'all deal with that? Joe, you wanna go first, brother? Yeah. Um and it, it's uh it's 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 tough. Um it's a tough question because um, you know, everybody deals with it differently and of course some some people are uh they go to the extreme to take their own lives, but uh most recent for me, for instance, my grandfather passed away, uh, you know, six, seven years ago or so, and uh, he was the he was the guy that I, I was telling the story on the other episode where he was shaving, and I'll ask him, like, you know, how are you doing that? You know what I mean? And um, that was my mother's uh, father, and uh, you know, the, the the way I dealt with it was. Um, you know, watching my mom and everybody just heartbroken. Mm. And the way I dealt with it was just, I just try to remember uh, the good, the good memories, you know, the, the good days growing up with him. And, uh, you know, I, I will look through pictures and, uh, you know, just inside me saying, you know, I have to remain strong, you know, and uh, he's in a better place. But, um, you know, I, I, that was my grandfather. You know what I mean? So, like, I wouldn't know what to do if I lost a child or my wife or anything like that. You know, I, I wouldn't know how to act. Um, part of me says that I, you know, I, I would I would deal with it. You know, I wouldn't go to some crazy. I would deal with it. But uh, it's hard, man. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's a tough situation to to put yourself in, in their shoes. You know what I mean? It's like, how do you, how do you, how do you answer that? Um uh, I don't know, but that's just how I, I, I dealt with that situation. Is just think of the happy moments and uh, all the good stuff that he taught me, and all the the great times and Christmases and everything that we were around and growing up, and um, you know. And then it just kind of I started feeling a little bit better, right, as t as time went on. But I mean, it takes time. It, it takes a lot of time to, especially when it's you know, because the loss of your grandfather is not the same as the loss. It just depends. But for me, the loss, of your, the loss of your grandfather is not the same as the loss of your father. Mm -hmm. You know, I would feel a whole, whole different, a whole lot different if my father passed away. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? And so, I'm not there yet, um, and I ho hopefully, I don't have to be there anytime soon with anybody that's really close. But uh, you know, shit happens, and uh, until that time comes, I guess I'm gonna have to uh, figure it out. Okay, big brother. Um, for me, just even listening to it, um, 
there's no one road when it comes to grief. Like I always tell people, cause I've learned for myself, grief comes in every day, like waves. Some days it's big, some days it's small. But one thing I learned for myself going through grieving processes is that one, you can't deal with it until you acknowledge it. And we all, there's a book called, I think it's the five stages of grief, you know, where you deny it, you get angry, so you got to go through the stages, but even as we're sitting here talking about it, you have, and it's going to sound weird to say this, you have to allow yourself to fall apart. Mm-hmm. You can't hold yourself up in that state of grief. You have to let everything that you know today fall apart to the horrible reality that this person is no longer here. And then with that, allow yourself to process it and go through it. I definitely think not just therapy, but you need actual specific grief therapy Mm -hmm. to someone to hold your hand and walk you through it. Cause no matter the first time or whatever time of, of passing of people, you, that's just something we don't know how to process because it's hard for us to think about our own mortality, let alone to see someone else transition and go on but for myself not to take up too much time it's just you have to let yourself fall apart and for myself when I went through a very hard time of losing family members and you know during my college type years you know losing my best friend it took me seven, eight months to even acknowledge that they were dead. And it took years for me to process it. And seeing how you're, the person you know has multiple ones, it's going to take some time because he has to process each one and not just process them as one thing altogether. And for me, you know, everyone always, you know, of course they always say, well, you know, the person's in a better place in which they are. But, you know, sometimes it's like, but what about me? How do I handle it? And just a scripture that I, I always leaned on during, the, you know, when it happens is God is close to those of a broken heart and a crushed spirit. It just you have to be rebuilt from that situation. You have to let yourself fall apart to be rebuilt into someone who can move on. Okay. Yeah. I agree with I'm agreeing with everything y'all saying. So uh, J Dot, my brother. Yeah, man, I um it was tough to listen to and um and I don't have, you know, I guess really an answer, just more of I guess a, a commentary on grief, you know, for us. I mean it, it, it definitely hit me when you say, wow. you know, when the guy said, I don't I don't know how to mm-hmm. you know. Um I hear what Big Brother is saying, and that's and, and you need that moment to be able to fall apart. Um, but I think for a lot of men, and especially you know black men, um, that feels like a luxury we can't afford. That's a luxury we don't we don't get the ability to fall apart. If we fall, everything falls, and so you know we we trying to figure out how to fall while standing up. That's you know. Like you said, the guy walking around with tears and as I know I've been in situations where my, you know, the tears are welling up and I don't know how to make them fall. Like, I don't know how to get from my, the emotion is building up and I don't know how to release it. I don't even know how, I don't know how to cry. Mm-hmm. And I was in my rap career. I, 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 I had a line about that, you know, talking about the drinking and I, you know, I'm saying for the pain, I'll take the shot and let it burn inside. I guess that's why I write. Cause I never learned to cry. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that I would be in situations where you you feel that emotion and don't understand how to relate. Like I, I mean, literally, I could, the tears are in my eyes, and I don't know what muscle or what it is you're supposed to do that makes it makes them fall unless you get it out. Let you just have that moment. I think many of us don't know how to do it, and oftentimes don't feel we have the space to do it. You know, we grow up in places and around people where any a moment of weakness is just not allowed. And even in that moment where you need to be, 
you are weak, you feel weak, and you need to just be vulnerable for a second, it's not, it's, it doesn't feel like a possibility for many of us. It's like, what do you, you know, what do you do when you, when there's nothing you can do, but you can't do nothing? You know, it's like, it's like a, a paradox. I can, I can 100% understand, you know, what that guy, I, I can't understand what he is going through in terms of what he's lost, but in terms of trying to, wrap your mind around how you find a space to process any of that. Um, I think it's a struggle for a lot of us. I think what you did, Willie, um, is important. I was I was at a conference maybe a year ago, and one of their discussions was about black male friendships and how um, we don't have emotional relationships with our male friends. Like I, we have friends that that is my brother. You know, if, if, if I needed him, he'd be here in a second. He'd fight for me. He'd die, you know, to, to take care of or protect me. But have we ever had a conversation about how we feeling? Mm-hmm. Do I, if I call him and tell him I'm sick right now, he'd be like, I right, Felicia, get over it. You know, like mm-hmm. that, that would be, that's how we talk to each other. That's how we know to talk to each other. And that's love for us. You know, mm-hmm. and, um, a lot of times what they were talking about in this in this conference I was at is that we 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 put all that emotional weight and responsibility on the women in our lives. And um, and that sometimes creating the problems that we have in these relationships. And, you know, I know for me personally right now, um, my mom gets I got friends. I got I got brothers, people I call brothers and it don't ever cross my mind to call one of them if I have something going on with me. It's, it's, it's going to be my mom, you know, and my wife probably had to bear the brunt of a lot of that too. And then, and then all of that stuff happens when, you, when you're having these emotional outpourings with women and then they end up with negative results. That's just another one of the things that gets stacked on the layers of I can't do that. I don't have a space to do that. So I think, you know, you as a man, reaching out to another man and letting him know, hey, you need a hug, you need to talk, whatever. Like, there's a space for you. And there's a space for you that's not going to have consequences. You know, you're not going to be risking your life by being vulnerable in this moment. You're not going to be risking your relationship by being vulnerable in this moment. Uh, you know, I think that's an important thing we we have to do for each other as brothers because many of us don't have those spaces Um uh, and we haven't had them our whole lives, so we don't even know that we're missing. We don't know how to seek it out because it wasn't something that was ever in the realm of possibility for us. So, uh, yeah, I I struggle with grief to this day. And my aunt just passed a few months ago, and um, I think I did I, I did a show about her, and she was my best friend. But when I heard that she passed, you know, my first thought had to be that's my mother's sister. She was living in the house with my mom. I flew back home not to attend my aunt's funeral. I flew back home to make sure I was there for my mother. But that had to be my first thought was I got to go be a protector. I got to go be a son. Uh, It never dawned on me. I lost my best friend. I need to work through this. So I don't know. I think think as men, if we open that door to other men, that you, you got a space over here to it. You don't have to shoulder all this or I can help you you know, fall apart while standing up. You know, we, we can keep going. You can keep going to work and pay the bills and all of that, but still process this. We can, we can, we can uh, carve out that space together. Um, I think that goes a long way in us for us in terms of grief. Well said. Well said. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna go too deep into about him or whatnot and all that. But I do know, this is how I know something stuck out was the day that they was going to make arrangements, he went to work and his wife went alone to go do it. So they had to make him leave work (laughs) to go be with his wife. That's how suppressed 
his emotions was was on trying to on grieving and processing. You know, so. Um, but I, I I check on him almost every day just to just to see where he's at. Um, I don't. I still think he has. He, I think he's done more suppressing than processing. To be honest, um, one reason I know is because I told myself, "Man, go to, why don't you go to barbershop? Let's go to barbershop. Let them shape up your beard. You know, you partially bald, so it's not gonna it's not gonna cost you that much. You know, just." Have him fade you up, do something, you know, make you feel better. You know what I'm saying? He's like, well, I do it all myself. I was like, I, I get that. I was like, but sometimes when you go to a barbershop or, you know, just let someone else do that for you. you now, this would be a moment where you just pay somebody to, to take care of that for you. That way you can sit back and relax. Like you actually going to pay somebody to help you relax. I said, and, and it, you, you'll feel, you'll notice a difference once you get up out the chair. You know what I mean? It's not really about to spend the money. It was just that, you know, let somebody else do that for you. You know what I'm saying? You 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 do feel different. You know, I tell you all the time, hey, I just went and got me up. This one got faded up. I'm feeling good. You know what I'm saying? You know. Uh but I I, I do wish him the best. Uh as far as for me, I've said this before, um, my grieving process is way different. You know, especially from Fiannas. Uh, I'm like a day or two type. You know what I mean? So um, <laughs> my only breakdown was when I lost lost my dog of 13 years. Because that was my best friend. You know what I'm saying? we 13 years with a dog, that's a long time. You know what I mean? So, but... And that's one of the reasons, like, I had one to get into third. Because I was like, dude, is, is my grieving process, is, is, I'm not even sure if there is a normal grieving process. Because some people grieve five years, the rest of their life. Some people, it's a week. Me, I'm a day or two. You know what I mean? So I don't know if it's because if it's because I'm suppressing after the, the, the second day, I'm ready to move on. You know what I mean? It it in my mind, they're gone. Let me go ahead and do the whatever crying, headache crying I'm gonna do. You know, cause those type of losses, you you end up having a headache. I don't know why. <laughs> you know what I mean? So and then I'm done. And then I continue on. You know, every now and then I may think of them here and there, but that, that's it. I had a, a nephew that passed away. Oh, I think it was early this year. I think it was early this year he had passed away. See, see what I'm saying? That's, that's what I mean. I, I, I've moved on to the point where I don't remember. I know it was recent, but... It didn't really hit me until I was playing some GTA and I was listening to some music on, on Spotify and a Tila song came on. And that was, I remember that was an album that me and him listened to together. So that was a breaking off or what um, Big Brother said. When, that was a moment where I fell apart. So... But, yeah, so I guess we're going to roll right into our uh, Health is Wealth segment. <laughs> and um, what's the segment? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, how important is it to seek um, therapy and grief counseling? You, uh, you just brought this up, big brother, you know. Uh, how, how important is it when, you know, when dealing with wow. death of a loved one's? Is absolutely important, you know, as we touched on it and through everyone's comments on everything like that. I think 
a lot of people don't realize therapy is therapy, but there are specific areas you can say, hey, I need grief therapy. And I always say to anyone, find a group, I mean, a group, a grief therapist, you know, whether through your job, through your medical benefits, or even if you, you know, locally, some type of free service, but no matter what, after you lose someone, immediately get into grief therapy. Okay. Joe? Yeah, I think it's about, you know, it's important. It's important that you, you don't even, sometimes you don't even have to look for a therapist. It just depends who you are. You can, a therapist could be your friend. You know, uh, that you could use that as your therapy, right? Not everybody can talk to a therapist, right? Not everybody is okay with talking to a therapist. And uh, for instance, like how you say, Willie, uh, you were giving therapy to that man. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So that's therapy right there. And sometimes you reach out to the ones that, hey, you know, uh, because we all know it's harder to talk to some people than others. You know what I mean? And, uh, so any 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 type of help, any type of reach that you can get to to get some help, so people can help you out, you know, uh, works out. But we also have to remember something: is there is levels of grief, you know. Um, there is the people that die of natural causes. There is the people that die of accidents, and then there is the people that get killed. There, you know. So it's it's a different level of grief if somebody murders your son. Uh, you hold on to hate. You hold on to all those emotions that are extra. If you would have died of natural causes the grief would probably be a little bit different than now you have to deal with the hate now it's like why did he get murdered why did this happen you know so now you have all this hate you have all these extra feelings in there that you know that, that you you have to seek some kind of help you know and, and yeah and like i said it seek uh, help immediately and if you can't talk to a therapist, if you don't feel like talking to a therapist, you know, talk to your closest friends or somebody that you can trust, right? Somebody you can reach out to. I, I think the only the only thing about that is, and we, no, you are you're correct. I understand what you're saying. I think the only thing is, like me, the the therapy part was letting him release what he was thinking and feeling what I can't do is give him the words in order for him to um help me out here big brother I don't I don't I a therapist is is, is trained to have the words give you the tools yes so thank you that, yes. so is but you know just to connect what everyone said you know from what joe said yes your your friend can be there as the almost like the band-aid mm -hmm. you know and your you know your therapist is kind of like the the antibiotic to kill the infection of the grief Mm -hmm. You know, and then kind of like with um, J. Dot said, he didn't know how, you know, some people don't know how to release the tears. And then with that, your therapist can show you how to stand in it, acknowledge it and see it as it is. So everyone has a component where we put it all together. It, you know, like you said, you know, your friend, your support system can be there as the band aid and the, you know, the occasional aspirin for it. But the therapist gives you the tools mm -hmm. and also what you need to kill the infection of the grief. Like you said, Joe said, sometimes there's hate and every types of malice in that type of how, depending on how they lost it. But the therapist will give you the tools, how to continuously work through it through your day and also to kill the infection of the grief to help you learn how to live life in this new situation. Yeah. That was what I was trying to say. Thank you, big brother. <laughs> I, I, I really, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't put it together. I knew that's that was what I wanted to say. I just didn't know I put it together. J dot, what about you, brother? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's always important to reach out for help when you need help. Um, but I think these conversations are 
equally as important because for a lot of us, it, we just don't understand that we need help. Mm-hmm. We don't. You 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 can get you can be in a space for so long that it's normal to you. Mm, true. That you know this is abnormal. That you could be living another way, or there's something else that's possible. There that happiness is possible, or that to be joyful again is possible. Um, this has just become your normal. And you know, a person like that might not might not reach out, reach out for help because they don't they don't even recognize that they need it. So I think you know these conversations and being able to talk about the grief process or or struggles with grieving um, just helps people realize that that they they may need help. And then yeah, if you, if you get to that realization, um, you know, always reach out. And it's, in, in my experience, somebody always reaches back, and it's it's probably someone that wants to help you just as much as you need the help. So, but yeah, we, we, we got to talk about this stuff more, especially as men. Um, so we start to realize that it doesn't have to be like this. This is not normal. Yeah, most definitely. I, I think, I think the reason why I said something to him or wanted him to talk is because I seen it. Now I, I know what, I know what he's doing. You know what I mean? So I was able to read it. So I was like, well, let me go ahead and let him do what he needs to do. You know what I mean? I even told him, say, hey, man, if you if you need to walk away, I'll go in the restroom and cry. Just go do it. Don't sit up. Don't stand around her, you know, and try to hold it in. You know what I mean? Because at, at, that's, that's a lot of strength. That is a lot of strength trying to hold that back, and that's it's, it's just gonna wear you down, man. But I I agree, I agree with every everything everybody said. Like I said, we, we everybody's gonna have different views, but I agree with everything. But at the same time, there was a lot of stuff that 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 was said, you know, that came out of this. Um, the only thing that I, I guess for me is. Um, I don't mind being the support, but I don't. I don't have. I don't always have the words. You know, I tell him that. You know, he he he's trying to be there for his wife, but he don't know what to say. And I'm like, dude, that's normal. I mean, sometimes there's nothing to say. Sometimes you just got to be in that space. Of 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 that. So, but well, fellas, I know we uh, we we definitely went down a down a hole tonight with this one. We definitely did. It's necessary. Yeah, very necessary. Very necessary. But um, so that let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> at this point I mean uh, uh, yeah I, I I do got one more thing but my my final thoughts is I remember I, re- I haven't finished it there is another book out there the body keeps the score and that talks about a, let me get a pen give me a sec okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the body the body keeps the score and I actually got that book because of Fiona. Because of her um cancel journey. Her breast cancer journey. So but it, 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 it talks about how your body goes through so much trauma that it reflects everything that you do in life. It's you know how you how you respond to people. And how you uh, react to situations. So, and it, and it talks about death as well. No, it talks about losses. So that that's definitely uh, another recommendation for anyone who's struggling uh, through grief or any type of uh, body trauma. So uh, the body keeps the score. Uh, go ahead, Joe. You want any final? You got any final thoughts? Yeah, my final thoughts is um, if you if you have somebody that uh, you know that's going through a tough time, always make sure to um, 
always make sure to to reach out, help them out, um, because it's tough, right? And uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna go into a, a story because it's we're wrapping it up. But you know, I, I've been in a spot where I had a friend that was trying to reach out. I just couldn't get to him in time, and um, he took his life. Mm-hmm. So if there's anybody that um, you know, you you know your friends. They're your coworkers that you work for a long time, you know them better. You know, it's, it's like family, right? You're 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 there at work sometimes longer than you are with your family. Uh, if you you know that somebody like like you will, you know somebody that's going through a tough time. You know, always try to reach out, or if they if they're trying to reach out to you, uh, you know, give them give them a little bit of time. You know, you might just help them out. Mm-hmm. Big brother. Um, just to say that. A lot of times when people lose people and they're going through the grief process, if you know someone going through that, please try to be empathetic and not rush them through their process. Do not become impatient with them if you don't understand it and you find yourself getting impatient with them. Please reset yourself because they're going through something that has no timetable on it and if you're the person going through it kind of like j-dot said you know hope is still an option it can and will get better and take your time with it and just to say to everybody here that you know i appreciate y'all uh and i appreciate the way we check in on each other and you know that i don't take that for granted i don't know what you're saying most definitely. J dot. Speak slower. Yeah, I just want to. Say the word slower. You know, I think people, you have to take care of yourself. Uh, you can't be anything to anybody else uh, if you're not good. So, you know, they preach a lot of time in recovery. You know, this is like when the, when the plane is going down, they tell you put your mask on first, mm-hmm. you know, before you try to help somebody else. But if you're in a space where, you know, where, where you're okay, um, just reach out. Reach out to, to any and everyone. Uh, uh, hey, how you doing? Uh, just thinking about you. What's up text? Sometimes goes a long way. Even if they don't respond, they saw it. And uh, you never know how in a, when, you know somebody's in a moment. Just knowing somebody else remembers they exist, you know, uh, it goes a long way. So, you know, even if you don't get a response, you know, if you got people you care about, just reach out. All right. But Kings, uh, something I do want to do before we do head out that we want to to start doing, make sure, let everybody know where to find y'all outside of the League of Kings podcast. Joe, go ahead. Uh, Yeah, so you can uh, find me on Spotify and uh, YouTube, Good Pots. It's uh, my my show is called uh, Bull Talk by Joe Podcast. And uh, also on YouTube, I have a, you can know, I have a bunch of videos there, uh, explorations or going out and trips and all, all kinds of stuff. So you can check that on there and, uh, uh, you know, like me, subscribe and make sure you, you, uh, you share. Share that. Yeah. The, uh, what is TWS podcast? I drop episodes every Monday on, you know, all your streaming platforms and uh, be on the lookout. Opulence radio is coming back. It was on a hiatus for a little bit. Uh, but it is coming back you know, with some brand new programming and some of your favorite shows, you know, like the all on the table happy hour will be returning. So I'm looking forward to getting back to work and I, I think folks will enjoy it. Okay. Big brother. Well, once again, thank the listeners. You enjoy this. You enjoy us separately on our shows. You can also find me on the big brother advice podcast. I'm the resident big brother, self-help motivation, Good advice and encouragement. New episodes premiere on Thursdays. And I am Willie from the Think About Us podcast that I co-host with my queen, Fiona. Uh, We talk everything about relationships. Um, Since now I'm on the League of King podcast, I can bring all my shenanigans and randomness over here. Uh, <laughs> so now we're just strictly just relationship. We're not, you know, political and all that now. So, but yeah, uh, anywhere that you can find these Kings, you can find us. So with that said, Kings and Queens.
We appreciate you turning in to the League of Kings podcast. Stay connected between episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Good Pods. For extra content, find us on YouTube at the League of Kings podcast and on TikTok at the League of Kings podcast. Until next time, keep exploring society and culture with us.